everybody. Thank you for coming out on this Sunday evening. And today we want to talk Kinvara about... Alive is made up of people from all walks of life, including a farmer, a farrier, a doctor, a teacher and a photographer. What unites them is a desire to raise awareness around mental health and suicide. And they've held several community events, such as a concert and a picnic, to highlight these issues. The main purpose of these events was to bring the community together, to bring young and old together. For example, on the concert, we got young musicians to play, so their parents came, their siblings came, and we had the age group from, from 5 to 80. And that is what we want to achieve with what we, what we do here in the village, to get people out, to meet their neighbour and to socialise. And we want to be visible on the streets, that we are there and that we are still there and that we can show Kinvara is alive. Members of the group have all been touched in some way by suicide, whether in its effect on the larger community, on friends or on family. Years ago, one of my sons tried to take his own life. Thankfully, we found him and could save him. Now he is the father of two and he is happy out. So he sometimes has, of course, his downs, as we all have. But then he got fantastic support from the community and from friends. And that's what we want to do. We want to be there and show that the community is there and supports you if you are down and if you feel down, if you need somebody to talk to. We set up the group as a result of um, a series of suicides in the area uh, in 2016. We set up a, a town hall kind of meeting of concerned members of the community and during that meeting we got an, an amount of people that were willing to be on a committee to try and, try and do something to tackle mental health and, uh, and suicide. Kinvara Alive found there was a lack of awareness about the help that's available, such as support groups like the Samaritans, Pieta House, Jigsaw and Aware, and the importance of the local doctor. Sean had his own reason for initiating the group. A few years ago, a good friend of mine, Pat, um, died by suicide. And I was left with a regret afterwards that, you know, that... I hadn't called him when I thought to call him a few days earlier. And a, a couple of years later, when all the suicides were happening in this area, I, it just came to me that I could do something. Kinvara Alive is very much a signposting group in that they connect people to the relevant services. To this end, they did a mail drop to 1,100 homes in the area. So we had a message, please read, read our message, and. Um, of hope and support from Kamara Alive that we care. So hopefully people would pick it up and, and want to open it. They would read the, the letter uh, from the group. They would get two um, wallet cards. So the wallet cards are, uh, we had two for every household. So we had the outside message that you see here, uh, five ways to, uh, to well-being in your community. We had uh, eight steps to prevent, help prevent suicide, and in the local GPs, um, what you would do in an emergency situation. They see a need for similar groups all over the country, and they're offering their template and any help they can give to anyone hoping to replicate what they're doing. We would help facilitate uh, with the design here, and we give you all the advice that you need to get this done in your local community or in your local workplace. We have planted a tree of hope here in the parish garden in 2016, even before Kinvara Alive started, because we wanted to create a place where people who have lost their loved ones by suicide can sit down, reflect and think about their loved ones. And from my personal experience, it's absolutely vital and very, very important that you talk about what happened to you, that you talk about your feelings, because that helps you a lot and it helped me to get over an experience I had in the past. 
The wishing tree is actually a beautiful tree that we had as a focal point for our picnic in the park. It was a recent event and the children arrived with their families. We played games here out in the open and the children put a little wish on ribbons and we tied it to the tree. And obviously green is mental health awareness colour so it was just very fitting and the children really enjoyed the event. And there's a major emphasis on training. The core group decided that our main objective was the skill set we had and to be most effective was to try and create awareness and to train people. And one of the most effective ways of training people is Safe Talk, which is a four hour intervention. It's free training and it's facilitated by the HSE. And we just felt this is one of the things we can give back to the community. We can organize this for our area so it's not difficult. And four hour training gives you skills to ask questions that you might normally have asked and to open the dialogue, that's what we wanted. Over the next five years, the group aims to have at least one person in every local household Safe Talk trained. Good afternoon listeners, you are listening live to your local community radio station Kinvara FM on 92.4. We go to the community as best we can. We set up, um, sometimes we can set up a stall in our local shops or at the farmer's market, which is always very busy. We engage with our local um, Kinvara FM radio station. We're very lucky and they're very supportive of us and also through social media. John, how are you doing? Welcome. Hello, Sean. 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 Today the group has a stand at the local supermarket and the man who delivers their Safe Talk training is here. I do the training for the National Office for Suicide Prevention, which is a body which the HSE has uh, set up. And it all comes from Connecting for Life, which was a document which the Department of Health set out in 2015 to 2020. And the aim of that document was in order to cut down on the amount of suicides which happen in Ireland. So very much part of that, one of the roles of that part was to, to send or to have all of this training all over the country and it's very, very much community-based. John sees a parallel between Safe Talk training and defibrillator training in the community, in that they both facilitate immediate help for people in crisis until the professionals arrive. Listening is so important. And for them, this might be the very first opportunity that they actually have to say how they're feeling as such. They are first aiders, we're training here, are first aiders. So really what we're saying is, we're saying, I am concerned about you. I want you to keep safe for now. What do I mean, keep safe for now, until I can get you to the professional, to your GP, to your uh, Pieta House, to any of the organisations. That's what we're training these people for. Group member Dr. Susan Carroll is only too aware of the devastation caused by mental health issues and by suicide. I have been on the receiving end of those phone calls that one of my patients has died through suicide and, and I've seen the grief of those left behind as well. And I just feel so passionate about suicide as it being such a tragedy that we all know it is. And that's why this group, I joined this group as soon as I heard about it and the work that they do, I felt I want to be part of something bigger, helping people in the community as well. Another member of the group has a very personal reason for becoming involved. Uh, I joined Kinvara Life because I would have been in a situation myself four and a half years ago um, where I was feeling very suicidal. Uh, really, I had hit rock bottom. It was the lowest I've ever been in my life. I had severe postnatal depression after my son was born and psychosis. And when he was about six months old, I had to be hospitalised. I was very sick. Um, so in my recovery, I did hear about Kinvara Live. I thought it was great what they were doing. At the time, I was too... I, it, things were too raw to join, join the committee at the time when they started um, but now that I feel 100% well again I feel almost a duty to go and help other people who are suffering the same thing and to maybe to be able to help family members as well to know what to do and how to watch out for this kind of thing. Nikki is much healthier now and her bond with her son has never been greater. We are so close. He's an absolute mammy's boy. He's four and a half now. <laughs> uh, I, f I feel fantastic. I, I'm much stronger in making uh, healthy decisions for myself. Once you can open up to just one person, 
things will get better, they will. And one of the plans Kinvara Alive has is to emulate a similar group in Dublin who put together a video of local faces and voices offering support to anyone suffering in the community. I'm Brian and I'm a postman here in Kinvara and it's safe to talk to me. My name is Monica McMahon. I work with Kinvara Alive. I'm trained in suicide awareness and it's safe to talk to me. My name is Eamon. I live in Kinvara and it's safe to talk to me. My name is Gerhard Tapelle, I am the local ferrier, it is safe to talk to me.